Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the online video lecture in connection with World Space Week 2022 celebration by SDSC SHAR. I am G. Gravudurai, Deputy Director, Range Operations. I am going to give a lecture on range system perspective with respect to sustainability. Regarding this topic, I will be talking in detail later. So I will talk about uh, space technology, then World Space Week theme followed by my topic. See, in, uh, in this world, United Nations had approved 198 uh, nations. So in this, launching satellites into the Earth orbit, there are only 11 countries, and the launching unmanned mission beyond the Earth orbit, there are only six countries. So launching astronauts into orbit, there are only three countries. So launching astronauts to moon or beyond, that is only one country. So India is, we have to be proud, India is one out of that 11 and one out of that 6 and shortly will be one out of that 3 also. So space technology, what is space technology? See space technology developed by space science or aerospace industry for use in space flight, satellites and space exploration. See, this World Space Week is getting celebrated from 1999 is an international celebration of science and technology to simulate interest in space, space science and space education. Why this World Space Week is October 4 and 2 10. October 4, 1957, the first satellite, there is a man-made first satellite Sputnik is launched. And why October 10? October 10, 1967, signing the treaty for exploration and uses of outer space for peace and scientific uses. Every year, they will give one theme. This year theme is space and sustainability. The theme focuses on importance of space exploration and its benefits to mankind, as well as sustainable development on our home planet. That is, Space can help to achieve a cleaner, fairer and safer planet Earth and improve the sustainability of future space activities primarily by cleaning up the space debris. Addressing the obstacles that stand in the way of humanity continuing to explore outer space in safe and sustainable ways. This is the theme of this uh, thing. United Nations had declared 17 sustainable development goals for peace and prosperity of people and planet now and in future. These are all the, the 17 goals that are all given in icons in the slide and the UN urged all the countries to work towards these 17 sustainable development goals. See, this uh, Sustainable Development Goal 17, what is the role of space-faring country? So how the space is helpful for improving this sustainable or implementing this sustainable development goals? You can see the goal 3, ensure healthy life and promote well-being for all at all ages. So ISRO is doing for so many years, this telemedicine is one of the applications so for improving the the health of all the rural places. Then coming to the four, that ensure inclusive of an equitable quality education for all and promote lifelong learning opportunities. This is a one a tele education is available. Then coming to six, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation. All the remote sensing satellite data are useful for this. Coming to nine, Build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. So we are going to encourage a lot of startup companies in the space business. Then coming to 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe and resilient and sustainable. So urban planning can be used with the satellite data. Then for the 13, uh, for meteorological, for the for better climate prediction with satellite, then for the ocean study, ocean sat satellites, and uh, coming to the 15, protect uh, 
restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, deforestation, how it is there, all those things using the satellite data can be used. So the space is the or the space applications. So it is useful for the implementation of sustainable development goals. So our ISRO, the space technology supporting the sustainable development goals by means of by satellite earth observation and satellite at positioning and navigation and communication and human space in flight and space technology transfer and space debris monitoring. Before going to my topic, then what is the vision of ISRO? So harness space technology for national development while pursuing space science, space science research and planetary exploration. The mission statement of ISRO is design and development of launch vehicles and related technologies for providing access to space. Design and development of satellites and related technologies for earth observation, communication, navigation, meteorology and space science. Communication program for meeting, telecommunication, television, broadcasting and developmental activities. Satellite based remote sensing program for management of natural resources and monitoring of environment using space based imagery. Space based navigation system space-based application for societal development, research and development in space science and planetary exploration, promote and authorize private firm to play a key role in global space market. You can see here Indian uh, space vision, where the space application and societal services, interplanetary exploration, presence in solar system, then low cost to access to the space, and finally what is that self-reliance in building satellite and launch vehicles. So ISRO, that program started by Indian National Committee for Space Research uh, in 1962 and first sounding rocket is launched in 21st November 1963. Then the first rocket made by India and launched from Tumba on 20th November 1967. See this, you can see the Indian space program, a phenomenal growth. You can see the first satellite what is shown here, Aryapata, then the, how the uh, the first rocket is moved, transported in a bicycle, then where we have now the biggest uh, uh, integration facilities. So now till now ISRO has uh, launched 116 spacecraft missions, 85 launch missions, then 13 satellites, the student satellites, 2 re-entry missions and 345 foreign satellites from 34 countries, which includes a PSLV-37 which has launched 104 satellites and the PSLV-25 Mars mission, PSLV-C-11 Chandrayaan-1 and JSLV Mark 3 m one Chandrayaan-2. This is uh, ISRO different uh, vehicles starting from SLV-3, ASLV, PSLV, GSLV Mark 2, Mark 3 and SSLV. You can see this PSLV we have done till now 55 launches and GSLV Mark 2 14 launches and Mark 3 four launches and the SSLV only one launch. And this uh, PSLV about the vehicle, you know this is the four stage vehicle and the strap on is there uh, whether six strap on or four strap on or two strap on or without strap on. So it is a versatile launch vehicle and is a workhorse of ISRO. And this GSLV it is a three stage, the third stage is cryo and second stage is liquid and uh, first stage is solid and strap on four liquid strap on. And this is payload is 2 ton to 2.5 ton. Then GSLV Mark 3, this LVM3, this is a two stage, first stage is liquid stage and strap ons are two numbers of uh, solid strap on and stage 2 is cryo stage and uh, the payload is 4 ton. And this is a small satellite launch vehicle and this uh, 2 meter diameter and 34 meter long and payload, uh, fairing is uh, 2.1 and lift off mass is 119 ton and payload can be 473 kg. Coming to uh, SDSC Shah, Sadish Tawan Space Center. So Sadish Tawan Space Center is one of the major ISRO center and space port of India. Provides the launch base infrastructure for Indian space program. So the principal launch center of ISRO this is and ideal for launches being on east coast and latitude is favorable for achieving low inclination. Located 80 km north of Chennai and 80 km south of Nellur, covers an area of about 175 square kilometer with a coastal line of 50 km. So Pulikot Lake surrounding Shar is a bad sanctuary. Coming to in SDSC Shar, the technical facilities where we have the 
solid motor protection and earth and liquid storage facilities then uh, solid motor static test facilities and vibration test facility then the range operations where i am going to talk about the sustainability perspective for the range operations tracking sources and telecommand meteorological mission computers real time systems and they are all available then coming to the vehicle subsystem preparation and integration and launch these are all the star mandates coming to range operations so these are all the different divisions in range operations so what are all the things here i am going to talk mainly about for the sustainability of range operations the flight safety space debris monitoring e waste and quantum technologies space safety plays an important role for the sustainable development of space it minimizes hazards for human space flight it gives for the protection of space and also protecting the earth population from reentry objects like spent upper stages and old satellites what is the current practices in the flight safety isro the pslv and gslv vehicles are expandable rockets are used in isro stages are separated and dropped off after their action is over to achieve payload efficiency these stages impacting in ocean which causes ocean pollution to avoid any casualty or damage to the space infrastructure notam that is notice to airmen and mariners is issued around this planned impact zone to avoid air and marine traffic leading to rerouting for air and marine traffic this is the current practices in the flight safety for sustainable practices planned in future reusable rockets have greater impact on the sustainable growth spent stages are recovered either by maneuvering them back to launch base or shift them with high precision heat shield are caught with the ship booster stages are recovered by mid air catch using helicopters if we do above it it reduces the ocean pollution requirement of nota that is what i told that notice to airmen and mariners what we issue through notam will be reduced then indirect benefit to the planet will be saving of fossil fuels which would be otherwise used for redirecting the air and marine traffic away from the notam zones coming to the first stage recovery by reigniting the booster and landing in launch base how we can do that after the first stage separated from forwarding vehicle the first stage starts the boost back burn to align its attitude for reentry after reaching peak altitude booster back burn ends once booster reentry starts the reentry burn begins to reduce reentry velocity booster is guided towards the launch base by grid fin for soft land single engine is fired and bring to learn with the deployment of landing legs so this is the way the first stage can be recovered coming to the first stage recovery by reigniting booster and landing in autonomous ship now for this after the first stage is separation flip maneuver is done and boost back burn starts grid fins are deployed to stabilize the booster once booster re enters reentry burn starts to reduce the reentry velocity aerodynamic guidance is used for guiding the booster to the autonomous ship for vertical landing after deployment of landing legs so this is another way we can capture the first booster stage coming to the payload fairing catch by ship so every launch vehicle has payload fairing and they are used for protecting the payload during the extreme aerodynamic conditions of ascent phase heat shield forms a major component that requires reuse but they are very delicate and cannot have any thruster to recover it safely like what i explained earlier the booster stage so after reentry steerable parafill is guided to predetermined location and the ship is also 
steed to intercept and catch the payload ferry. GPS is also used for the precise location and guidance requirement in this scheme. Coming to booster stage catch by helicopter for small vehicle like our ISRO SSLV that small scale launch vehicle where the booster stage does not have any reserve fuel available for recovery booster stage. So booster stage can be recovered only by helicopter. So one hour before the lift off helicopter can be moved to the position in the capture shown. First stage separates at T plus 230 seconds sorry 230 minutes. So their drop parachute is deployed at 13 kilometer altitude and main parachute will be extracted at 6 kilometer altitude reducing the velocity of descending stage to 10 meter per second. Helicopter will catch the main parachute with a hook. Once the stage is captured it is offloaded in recovery vessel. ISRO's attempt for the recovery option is done through a test vehicle based on L40 stage of GSLV. You can see this admire. This is the test vehicle for recovery to launch base. And these technologies with the whatever explained in this slide, propulsion systems, inertial system, vehicle and mission, infrastructure, all these technologies to be demonstrated successfully for deploying them in actual reasonable launch vehicle. Let us move to the second point, the how the artificial intelligence is useful for sustainable development. Artificial intelligence comprises all techniques that enable computers to mimic intelligence. Coming to the first application of that smart agriculture, production forecasting of important graphs using satellite remote sensing data is carried out is already carried out by our space application center ISRO under the project crop acreage and production estimation for the Ministry of Agriculture. Coming to the second application climate informatics, a new field of climate informatics blooming that uses artificial intelligence for weather forecasting and understanding the effect of climate change. Smart disaster response and AI based application will help the rescue workers to find the safe route when the disaster happened. Presently, all satellites are commanded from ground for health monitoring or analysis. In future, spacecraft constellation identified the necessary technology to improve automation which includes self-carrying, autonomous navigation, automatic telemetry analysis. Rovers can navigate around obstacles by autonomously finding their way across unknown field. In astronomy, artificial intelligence can help the data analysis to find new stars and new extraterrestrial planets. Coming to the IT sustainability, information technology sustainability. In information technology, from chip to any supercomputer or any servers or anything in the data center has a carbon price tag. IT produces 4% of green greenhouse gas emissions. Information technology uses 3% of electrical energy. So to, for the IT sustainability, cloud computing to be used. That is, people have to make use of everything in the cloud that is whatever they want hardware and software platform for their development or for their application they have to use the platform on demand and whatever application software what they need they have to use uh, in the cloud computing uh, application on demand if they want to store they have to use storage on the demand coming to they have to make use of energy efficient devices that is people have to use less energy consuming devices and uh, in case of if they, they, can, they have to use laptop instead of a desktop, use LED monitor instead of CRT monitor and put off or hibernate the computers when the computers are not getting used. Then paperless office, it saves time, decreases the carbon footprint. Then coming to repair and reuse because it reduces the e-waste. People should not use any IT product, use and throw. IT product should be used, repair and reuse. 
and green computing practices to be done. Green computing practices that with green design, that is, a energy efficient IT products are used, and green use minimizes the electricity consumption. Green manufacture minimizes the waste during the production. Green disposal, recycling the electronic component, and repurposing the existing equipment. The third topic, what I am going to talk, is e-waste management for sustained usage of electronic components. The first solid state electronic calculator was invented and put to use in 1960. From that time till now, there is enormous growth in electronics. We have evolved from one phone per area or per village in 1990. to one phone per house in 2000 to one phone per person in 2020 also the technology is growing so fast that instruments are becoming obsolete within 3 to 5 years this result in enormous amount of e waste till now all the electronic industries their prime focus was on cost effectiveness miniaturization and usability for that technology to be sustainable the e waste should be properly managed so that it does not compromise on the environment and availability of resources for future generation the word sustainability means meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs india manufactured 300 million mobile phones in 2020-21 which is 60 million produced in 2014-15 it is five fold from 2014 to now according to the hindu the business line in may 2012 2022 around 77.3% of india's e waste is not being collected are disposed by the government only 22.7% of the e waste out of total 10 lakh ton generated in 2019-20 in india was collected dismantled recycled or disposed of which means only 7.85 lakh ton of e waste is left to pollute the environment e waste is anything whatever we use it can be a smartphone or laptop or televisions that have reached the end of uh, reached the end of their life as well as the components that make up this end of life products the hindu report highlights that e waste typically does not feature in the list of even the municipal solid waste and therefore not a direct mandate for the cities to collect transport and manage however looking at this exponential growth it's a now time to rethink the policy framework and recognize the city government as one of the key institution to spearhead the us e waste management just look at this if we if e waste is dumped and exposed to soil and moisture various chemical leaches into the environment and gradually poisons the soil making it infer- infertile irresponsible disposal and extraction of metals by the unorganized sector has further lead to air land and water pollution in affecting the human and environmental health e waste accounts 40% of lead and 70% of heavy metals found in landfill chemical release from the e waste and its effect on human health the lead damage to nervous system blood system kidney damage and affect the brain and development and cadmium accumulates in kidney causes neural damage mercury chronic damage to the brain respiratory and skin disorders so beryllium lung cancer and skin diseases what are the steps involved in managing e waste collection of e waste and safe storage identify e waste category of item and determine the composition and hazardous content of e waste sorting of hazardous and non hazardous recovery and reusable materials like copper gold etc 
safe disposable and non reusable hazardous material how to minimize the e waste in industries management e waste should begin at the point of generation this can be done by waste minimization technique and sustainable product design waste minimization industries involves adopting inventory management production process modification volume reduction recovery and reuse e waste management at sdc shar sdc shar operates wide range of electronic components like computers servers network elements batteries plcs pcbs which are used for the purpose of measurement control automation data processing monitoring analysis etc for research and development and for supporting the launch activities e waste management policy at sdc shar ensures that all unused or condemned electronic component is disposed through authorized agency or reused without causing environmental damage the fourth topic isro initiative on space situational awareness to talk about before that let me just explain what are all the radars at sdc shar available sdc shar we have four c band radars they are all in working in transponder mode for to provide a long range tracking up to 3000 km two s band radar which work in skin mode to provide the range up to 500 km and we have two l band radars multiple object tracking radar and mobile multiple object tracking radar this operates in skin mode up to it can get 1000 km and uh, this is the real time network where the all these radars s band radars c band radars they track the vehicle and they will transmit their position and transmit the vehicle position to the mission computers the mission computers it is processed and it is displayed in the range safety officer thus to follow the trajectory or to know the trajectory and to take the appropriate decision and we use meteorological radar to get the cloud movement because it's a very important during launch the cloud movement towards the launch pad to be monitored and wind profiler radar to get the wind speed and wind direction vertically up to 21 km for the launch site and this multiple object tracking radar which is used or we can track multiple objects so this radar operates in l band that is at 1.3 gigahertz it can track up to 10 objects of 1000 km range of 0.25 m square surface area if it is a 20 object it can track up to the range of 500 km space of objects tracking this radar this multiple object radar tracking radar is used for tracking the space objects in low earth orbit based on the visibility of selected space object with respect to multiple object tracking radar coordinates tracking session is planned when it passes over this region instantaneous location of an object in leo is measured at regular interval for a period of 60 seconds to 200 seconds depending upon the size and its slant range measurement data is used for determining orbit of the object that is orbit determination all objects of concern are tracked and their orbital parameters are cataloged regularly for further analysis this multiple object tracking radar also useful for tracking the thrusting and forward moving launch vehicle object along with jettison stages of launch vehicle during launch missions measured data is used for estimating instantaneous impact point where the separated object is likely to fall immediately after injection of satellite into orbit in pslu missions orbiting final stage ps4 is also tracked based on the visibility and its orbit is estimated and cataloged mrtr tracks launch vehicle object up to 1600 km and 1200 km slant range in pslv and gslv missions respectively coming to the space sustainability towards sustainable space based missions ensuring all humanity can access and use outer space for feasible purposes and socio economic benefit now and in long term 
challenges to the space sustainability. First, the space debris. Increasing space debris poses a great threat to human space flights. Orbital overcrowding. Space in Earth's orbit is limited. Large network of satellite constellations are planned in the near future. Starlink with 40k satellites, China with 12k and one work with 6k, that is 6000. Then space security, the third point, space security. Many countries are developing technologies to disturb and destroy satellites in orbit. Anti-satellite missions have leave huge number of fragmentations in orbit for years together which cause a potential risk for others. How to solve these space sustainability issues? Space debris removal, responsible decommissioning of satellites after end of life, data sharing with friendly nation, traffic management in space, space situational awareness. And you can see this here. What is the threat in space? Shuttle window damage with the space debris and robotic arm damage in ISS, then solar panel damage in one of the satellites. And similarly, you can see bottom the threats on the ground. In Maharashtra, something has fallen and Dindigal in Tamil Nadu, something has fallen. You can see the 1957 how the space debris around the globe in 2005 and you can see 2018 how it is, how it will be in 2030. So with the increasing number of satellite launches every year, all over the globe, the space debris poses a big threat to operational satellites in space. Non-operational man-made objects orbiting in space like defunct satellite, launch vehicle stages, fragmentation from breakup of rocket models, they are all become space debris. How the space debris is a matter of concern? A small object of 1 cm size traveling at 7 km per second can cause a significant and irrecoverable damage to the function satellite in case of a collision. Hence, it is absolutely mandatory to constantly monitor outer space for detection, cataloging and orbit prediction of all objects orbiting the earth. In case of a potential threat from a debris which is within the vicinity of an orbiting satellite, the mitigation steps are taken so as to avoid and protect the satellite from a possible collision by means of orbital maneuver. You can see today active functional satellites are 2200 in space. Dead satellites are 3000 and space junk of uh, size uh, 10 cm and above is uh, 34000. What is ISRO initiative in space situational awareness? ISRO has taken up space situational awareness initiative which involves gaining knowledge of space environment including location and other relevant information of all space objects. With gained awareness, the objective is to protect all its functional satellites from inadvertent collision with one another or with the other satellite debris as well as from natural elements like asteroids. With knowledge on the space environment, safe and sustainable launch mission can be planned in such a way that launch vehicle traverses the crowded region around the earth safely to reach the prescribed orbit. The multi-object tracking radar which is there in at Tesla is one such instrument which can track space objects in low Earth orbit and provide information on outer space up to the Leo space. The final topic what I am going to explain is a quantum technologies. It will have major impact in the field of computing and communication in future. Quantum computation is based in quantum bits or qubits. Quantum computation is performed by qubits which are the system that gives as input and output where the operations are performed. Quantum computers are thought to bring several advantages comparing to the classical computers. Quantum algorithms are exponentially faster, takes less resources than the classical computers. This is based in the idea of quantum parallelization. Qubits that built up Quantum computers are strongly coupled among themselves but decoupled from environment. Quantum radar. Quantum radar exploits quantum phenomena to enhance the resolution of radar system with good sensitivity. Quantum radar is using microwave photons, optical photon as well and 
quantum phenomena to improve the target detection and recognition performance allows to detect an object without being detected oneself will be able to detect the targets with low reflectivity in the presence of very bright and thermal noise what are the advantages of this quantum radar higher target detection probability considerable detection probability even at 0 db more difficult to detect by the adversary more resilient to jamming improved sar imaging quality improved detection through collector tracking process and major components the spdc process creates a signal photon and an idler photon that are both entangled the signal photon beam is sent towards the target via an antenna the idler photon beam is sent directly into the idler detector array which will be used to detect the quantum state as soon as the transmitted signal impinges on the target the idler detector output simultaneously appears and waits in the memory until the return signal is processed in the receiver and detected into the signal detector array what are things involved for this tracking radar entanglement generator transmitter quantum memory and photon detector quantum radar major challenges improved mathematical framework to describe quantum information fast and efficient generation of entangled qubits improved microwave single qubit detector reliable quantum memories efficient and fault tolerant quantum hardware improved quantum signal processing techniques improved quantum data fusion algorithms better understanding of the qubit target and qubit environment interaction isro initiative on quantum communication isro scientists managed to create an atmospheric channel on the ground to enable sharing of quantum secure text image transmission and quantum assisted two way video calling scientists have developed various key technologies like high brightness entangled photon source bbm 92 protocol implementation navy enabled synchronization polarization compensation techniques and developed a cryptographic application software suit with integrated quantum security with this let me conclude my lecture thank you very much